Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're excited to have you on. During today's webcast, we will be going over our latest release 11.4, where we have several new features that will help improve efficiency. My name is Agnes and I work on the marketing program team here at GitLab. I'm joining you from Jakarta, Indonesia today. Also joining us this morning is John Jeremiah from Product Marketing and James Ramsey from Product. We're going to give people just a couple more minutes to get locked on. While we're waiting, I'm going to launch a poll. You can take part in if you'd like. The graphic on this slide may be useful as you think through your answer for the first poll question. Thank you to everyone who participated in the poll. Before we get started, I'm going to cover a couple of housekeeping items. First, feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation. You can use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen for that. We'll have dedicated time for questions at the end of the presentation and demo, but you can go ahead and send in your questions as you think of them, and we'll make sure to get to them at the end. If you're experiencing any technical difficulties, you can use the chat function to get in touch with me the moderator for help. Now I'm going to turn it over to John to talk about the results. Thanks, Agnes. I'm super happy to be with everyone today and to talk to you all and talk about what's happening in 11.4. Uh, we keep releasing so fast, I, got, I almost got tied up on 11.0. But 11.4 is an exciting release and, and it's one of the things that's most exciting about it is all the things we've done to help improve efficiency across the whole life cycle. And, and, and so to look at that, and when I look at the poll results, and I think you, you can all see the poll results, you know, I can see that, again, it's, it's, it's common that I see a lot of people using, you know, focusing on source code management and the create stage of the life cycle. But it's also, it's exciting to see the breadth of what people are doing across the life cycle about people who are, you know, trying to work on planning and managing their projects to, you know, verifying and releasing. So it's, for me at least, it's good to see, and it's, it's a trend I see happening when I talk to customers as well. Uh, James, I don't know what you see when you talk to customers, but for me, this is, this is a, a pattern that I see people doing. And as people learn more about the capabilities of the life cycle, I think people start to adopt and implement more of these, more of the features across the breadth of GitLab. Absolutely. Hi. So let's go ahead and dive in. And I want to cover off on a few high level points about what it was key to 11.4. And, and as I saw 11.4, it was really about how we help improve efficiency across the life cycle. It was really capabilities and a lot of in features that we released that help people to deliver more effectively and more efficiently and not spend as much time working on what they were doing. And we'll talk about code reviews and how we've made code reviews easier, both with batch commits and suggested reviewers. We'll look at feature flags. We also had a pretty cool update where we moved ci.yaml into core. Uh, and then lastly, a couple other pieces around the file tree and tables. Uh, it, for me, it's always exciting to do these because this, this is again our 88th consecutive monthly release. And so being able to deliver quickly and to move quickly is key. Now, Suggested reviewers was a feature that we built on. Uh, we started off with code owners in our last release, and then this release we started to roll in the idea of who should be selected or who should be involved in reviewing a merge request. 
And so with, with this, now we're able to suggest, and you'll see this in, in the demo we do later, of who should be involved in reviewing this specific change. The intent here is to make it easier for you to identify who should be reviewing code and who should be involved in making those changes and, and approving the changes before they go live. And we'll look at that shortly. Now, the other thing was that we, we realized that it took, you know, oftentimes when people were making comments and we were doing updates and commenting on a merge request and you'd, you'd end up with a, a series of one comment with a notification and another comment with another notification. And, and before long, you just get hit with one notification after another after another as someone was making comments. So with, with 11.4, we've introduced the ability to have batch comments, to bring comments together into one consolidated review. So as you can make your comments, you can set them up and effectively staging your comments such that it becomes one, one notification back, back to the team to be aware of what the, what the update was. So batch comments, again, makes it easier and more effective to make your, make your comments and for teams, and for people to get notifications about those. Now, in, in the spirit of trying to help everyone be more effective and efficient, we heard from a lot of people in the community about the power and the usefulness of having include files and making them available. And up until now, they were available in Starter. And, and we've, in responding to that, we realized that we needed to move it down and we moved the YAML fi include files into, into the core, into the community edition, making it an open source capability. Again, it makes it easier to manage you know, how you go about planning your CI pipelines and managing that so that way you can have multiple include files. So rather than having you know, all of that, all of the details in your YAML repeated, you can have a single include file to manage it easier. Excitingly, the new feature, an alpha feature coming into this release is the capability to, to have feature flags built into GitLab. And with feature flags, we have the ability then to turn on or turn off specific features in your application, all from GitLab and to manage it from GitLab. We'll demo that in just a few minutes, but this helps you to go faster and to release capabilities to your users without having, with the ability to turn on a feature or turn off a feature, depending upon where you're at. This will help you to go, this will really help to unlock your ability to go faster and to release faster. And it's, look for this to be something that we continue to iterate on as we go forward. Now, one of the problems or challenges oftentimes with a complex merge request is there's lots of different files included in it. And being able to understand where they are at in the directory and what files are changing was a was a update to improve our merge request to make it easier so you can navigate the file tree to understand which files are changing and what the status of those are. Again, helping you to be more efficient and effective in making in making updates and managing your merge requests. And, and the last big improvement, or what I think was a big improvement, is I've been using Markdown tables a lot, is uh, a contribution from the community to add the ability to add a table right there in the editor to make it easy to build build out markdown tables. Uh, I don't know about everyone else, but I know I've usually spent a fair amount of time copying and pasting and finding tables that I could use uh, in the work I'm doing, and I, I'm excited to see this this added here. So it's going to make make a lot of people's work. I know for myself, my work more efficient and more effective. So James. I think I've, I've gone through some of the key highlights that I wanted to touch on, at least in the slides. How about you? Are you ready to share and go with the demo? Sounds great. We'd love to. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. I'm excited to show you some of these features in real time. So I'll share my screen. OK. I hope you can all see my screen now. Um, so the first features I'd like to show you relate to merge requests. So here's a, a copy of a merge request I'm actually working on on gitlab.com at the moment um, that I've copied out to a demo environment. Um, I'm trying to add a new feature to our API that requires changes to Giddly. So I've made a few changes to the Giddly source code which you can see here. So I've changed eight files. Um, so the first feature I'd like to show you is leaving batch comments. And so one of the really great applications of them is um, during a review, frequently you'll leave a comment, you'll notice something that seems out of place. 
Um, so maybe this, this flag doesn't seem useful. Um, what is this used for? What a strange variable to be adding to this, this test file. But then I come down maybe 10, 15 lines and all of a sudden it's explained why, why this file is here or why this variable is here. So I don't need my comment anymore. So using reviews, I can delete this before I waste the valuable time of whoever's going to see this notification. Um, but let's go through and add some comments. Um, this description isn't clear. I'll start a review. Um, uh, this should be true, I think. So as you can see, we're starting to build up some comments here. Um, Oh, I've got a little stub here about an unimplemented function. This needs to be implemented for merging. And so this is this is what it sorts this, this is what it looks like as you uh, leave more and more comments. We can see that they're pending, that they haven't been submitted, and I can submit a review at any time. Um, or if I want, I could add that comment immediately and continue on with the rest of my review can edit the individual messages, um, delete them, and the rest of my review is still be in place. And then when I'm happy, I can click Submit Review. The other feature I wanna show you is the file tree, which makes it much easier to navigate this. I'm scrolling through this really long list of files and I get really lost. I'm not very good at keeping a mental map of where I'm at. So we've added a new file browser, which all of a sudden, gives you a nice searchable file tree. So I can quickly see the test files that are changed, click on that to jump to the test files, uh, or I can jump down here and look at a specific implementation. This is some automatically generated code. Um, and this makes it really nice and easy to jump around small merge requests, large merge requests, and anything in between. Um, so these are some really great improvements that make doing code review more efficient, um, um, both in the process of adding the feedback um, and also just the navigation and um, understanding what's going on. I see a few chat questions. Um, so it seems like people are having some issues seeing your browser, uh, James. I don't know if it's possible to... Uh, are you, is anyone, are you seeing my screen, John, or you are? I, I am seeing it very well, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm, I think seeing it, well. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it as well. Uh, it might be a Zoom issue where people haven't gotten the window open. Okay. Uh, someone says it's better now. Okay. Um, I'm. I apologize uh, to anyone who's had trouble. I hope uh, you caught the important bits. Um, uh, so the next we can. We will have recording as well. So don't. Absolutely. Don't worry. Great. Right. The, uh, the next feature I'd like to show you is feature flags. Um, we can all see it, but this is at the top of the screen. Okay, I think it's resolved. Okay, so the next feature I'd like to show you is little feature flags, which um, you can play with um, to demonstrate this feature. I'm just loading it up. Get lab, okay. So here we are, here's this feature flags app um, and I'll quickly toggle over to the source code um, because that's kind of important to explain what's going on. So this is a tiny little Go web server to demonstrate feature flags and how they work. Um, so there's some configuration information um, at the top which is connecting the feature flags server um, and I'll show you where to get that information from in a second. Um, the rest of this app is sort of implementation details. Here I'm initializing the library, it's language specific. Um, but really the guts of this application is a simple hello world app. And I'll show you roughly what it looks like. So it says hello world, but it's got a feature behind a feature flag. And if we come down here to this get name function or the server function, we've got a template where it's actually getting the, the a name parameter from the request. And if the greeting feature is enabled, that's this line here, it's gonna show me a name. So let's go back to the feature flag app in uh, GitLab and go to the operations dashboard and check out feature flags. We'll see I've created a feature flag called greeting. I'll just 
in the source code, we can see that's the same variable I've used here is enabled greeting. Currently it's inactive. So if I just launch my application, go run, reload this, allow, okay, now my server's up and running. So saying hello world, I'm going to quickly add a name. Oh, hello, James. It's ignoring this, this argument, right? So if we go back to our feature flag and click edit and enable it, this has enabled the feature flag on the server. And if I reload my little application, it now says, hello, John. And so what we've just done is we've enabled this feature using feature flags on GitLab in the application that I built, which is totally separate. So what's happening is we're using the, oh, let me go back to the source code. What we're doing is we're using the Unleash library here to connect to the, the feature flag server that we've got running on GitLab. Um, and we're using that to toggle this feature. And so the, the Unleash library requires a couple of configuration parameters to get up and going, um, which can be found in the feature flag dashboard. Um, you can read more languages, more about which languages are supported um, and where to download the compatible client libraries from um, by clicking the links and going to the documentation. Um, but it's supported in quite a few different languages. Um, and this is a really exciting feature for um, this integrating like sophisticated feature development and the feature flags needed to progressively roll those out, um, closing that loop and integrating it nicely into GitLab. And so that's feature flags. Just check if there's been any questions. Very cool. James, uh, one question I think is, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. somebody raising their hand and the attendees raising their hand. Uh, well, I guess one of the questions would be is what languages are supported for, uh, for feature flags? There's quite a few, obviously Go, <laughs> um, which I used in the demo, but also Java, Node and Ruby. And there's also some, so those are sufficient, officially supported clients. And there's also, community contributed clients that um, also work with the Unleash uh, server, which is for .NET um, and Python. So that's the six languages that are supported by Unleash. Very cool. Awesome. Uh, other, okay, then Norbert was asking, uh, what about Kotlin? And I don't think it's supported yet. I don't think it is, no, but um, given that it's open source, you could probably create your own client. I don't think it's uh, particularly complicated, but there might be also a community project that we're not aware of. Um, so I'm not sure. Okay. Fair question. So we're, we're at the point where James, do you have anything else you were going to demo? That was, that was all I was going to show you today. Yep. So from a Q and a perspective, are there questions from the audience or questions you can put them into the chat? or in the Q&A feature. Uh, while we're waiting on that, I, I guess I have a, you know, a question. And I think the, one of the things I thought was cool was the, the ability to do uh, was, you know, was how, how do I say this? Uh, so one of the things I thought was, was neat was uh, how the you know batch comments are coming and how there are updates to what we're doing around you know source code management and create what's what's on the horizon what's what's next um i guess one of the things that is we're working on right now as you mentioned earlier john is uh, the, the code owners feature so we recently released the first iteration of code owners and then in 11.4 we released the automatic suggestion of approvers based on code owners. Um, we're going to be continuing to iterate on that in over the coming releases. So in 11.5, um, we should see automatic assignment of code owners. So if you've got a code owners file, um, 
as soon as you open the merge request and start pushing files, the appropriate code owners are automatically going to be added to the merge request. So it's not a manual process at all anymore. It's fully automated. Um, and then we're continuing to go even further than that. Um, and in 11.6, uh, we'll be um, adding more structure to our uh, merge request approval system to prepare for 11.7, where we hope to ship required approvals for code owners. So adding that enforcement layer for organizations that um, really want to have a strict code review process where if someone is assigned a code owner, that person must approve any change to that file. Um, so that's some exciting improvements there. Um, and we're also looking at continuing to streamline um, batch comments and code reviews with uh, um, the unified notification that you meant, mentioned. Um, that's coming very soon, um, along with um, the ability to suggest changes in um, merge request comments. So when you're leaving a comment on a diff, you'll be able to suggest an alternative um, line and just hit apply with a single click and automatically apply that change into the merge request. So those are some exciting features we're working on uh, in the near future. Very cool. Yeah, those are going to be exciting changes and updates. Uh, I'm, I'm watching, there's a conversation in the chat. I don't think it's a question. Uh, here we go. Uh, we have three teams, one team currently promoting to two dev boxes stages. You can read it too. Uh, mm -hmm. It's in the chat from James. We have three teams. One, four. I'm not sure what the question is. Maybe, maybe he's still typing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I get the question from James. I think he's asking if there's a documentation. Um, oh, how to manage multiple team releases. Right. I'm not sure, James. It might be um, a little difficult for us to um, answer the question in this format. So uh, you'd be welcome to open an issue on the, the GitLab issue tracker with a, like a detailed question of um, the situation you're having and um, how you're hoping to use GitLab, and we'd be happy to try and answer that and point you to either documentation or um, a feature request that'll uh, address a uh, situation. And then Norbert is asking, I thought there would be a way to review a file blob instead of a commit. There, we, we do have some uh, ideas, Norbert, about uh, adding the ability to review files outside of the merge request workflow. Um, so like review a blob that is just in a commit somewhere in your repository. Um, but we don't yet have a workflow for um, leaving, leaving that feedback on a line by line level and making it actionable. Um, we do have some commenting capabilities where you can leave a comment on a file um, like at a file level on a blob, but not on a, a line by line basis, if that's what you're referring to. All right, if we don't have any more questions, perhaps uh, we can, um, you know, maybe share, maybe uh, John, you can share uh, about the upcoming release. Sure, absolutely excited to do that. Uh, there we go. So I, I thought I'd include a little bit of a tease because you know, we do this every month and I looked ahead to what's coming next month, at least what's, uh, what's on the docket. And uh, I saw a couple of things that I was excited about seeing. I saw parallel CI jobs. Uh, I saw updates to merge requests and, and James already talked about assigning approvers. So I, you know, I, I think 11.5 is the next release is going to be even you know, continuing to be exciting. Uh, and more features and more capabilities are coming to help make you be more efficient and more effective. Uh, so with that, uh, you know, that's, I think the, for me, the, the key there. And I think we have what one more page to go, which is our wrap up. Yes, Agnes. Which You're is right. your feedback. Um, yeah. So thank you everyone. Um, you know, for attending today's um, release radar webcast. We'd love to hear your thoughts on today's 
webcast and would really appreciate your responses to our webinar survey, which I have up on screen and I will also drop into the chat. And then um, I guess I would like to end by saying we would also like to invite you to sign up for a free trial of GitLab Ultimate. Um, we hope you're excited to see what your team can do with it. I will chat that link as well. And finally, if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach us via our sales contact page about gitlab.com slash sales. That's all for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks everyone. Thank you.